Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. I'm Noreen Burke, and today I'm going to show you how I completely redid my little office area with supplies from thrift stores, Habitat for Humanity, and just sheer determination to do it on a budget. Let's go. I feel like I'm always starting these videos by saying I'm so excited to share with you, but the truth is you guys are like the friend I excitedly get to share information with over coffee or wine. That kind of depends on when you're watching this, but I'm really excited to show you what I did. So my office area has been an issue for a while. Most of you know that I am in a garage, but if you don't, my home is super tiny. So for me to have a studio where I can film, a craft area and where I can run my business, I ended up creating an office area in my garage. I had a hand-me-down desk and lateral file, which were fantastic. They were such a great help. But over time, this area has become more and more problematic for me. And because my garage used to flood, I had to have everything up on two by fours. Thankfully, that's been resolved, but it meant my desk was super tall, which was giving me a lot of issues physically. I wanted to make sure I came up with a solution that would handle all of the things I needed to have around my desk, but open up my surface area more so that I had space to spread out when I was working on a project. Now the amazing thing is, is once I started looking at desks, oh my gosh, they were expensive. So I went on to Google trying to find some ideas for DIY desks, and I already knew I was going to pretty much do a simple design, but I still wanted something that was going to give me a lot of functionality and look nice and kind of match the aesthetic that I started creating back here, and that's when I saw this desk idea. I loved that it was a simple design with just two storage units flanked on each end with long pieces of wood, but then it was mirrored by the long stretch of shelves above it. This was so beautiful to me, and as soon as I saw it, that was it. I went on the hunt to start finding as much as I could that matched it. If you watched my last video, you know that I found the two file cabinets on the side at Habitat for Humanity, and instead of painting them, I covered them with contact paper. I am so happy with that decision because they look fantastic. I've already bumped them around a little bit and they have absolutely held up so far. I've been putting files in them, opening the drawers, closing the drawers, and everything is absolutely perfect on them still. This was such a great find. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I will have it in the description below. But once I got those finished, they were the perfect piece to begin creating the rest of the area around it. I started off by going to Lowe's and looking at one by eights and one by sixes. I had them cut down to size. It's always nice that they offer this service for free. And once they were cut, I was ready to go. But I've mentioned to you before that Lowe's has a section where they have extra pieces of wood. When someone cuts something down, the remnant is oftentimes not something that they need, so they'll just let it go into a corner, and it's free wood for you guys. Check out what I found the day that I was getting my wood cut. They had this giant scrap pile, and I was trying to not be greedy and take all of it, but I did take a pretty good amount of it. And as you can see, I was really excited to find that and get it into my car and start on my project. So this was a bigger project than I first thought it was going to be. You know, so many times I get excited and I think, oh, it's not going to be a big deal. Just undo it, paint the wall, put the new stuff in, and it's done. That's pretty much the actual list. But the minutia of taking everything apart, disassembling my computer, I had made sure that everything was up on two by fours and that it was structurally sound. So I had to disassemble all of that. Plus, I just had a lot of stuff on that desk. So I made a giant mess of my area. But once that was all cleared out, I was able to go ahead and start painting, which I almost didn't do. I was being lazy. And my kids came in and said, Mom, why aren't you painting the wall the same color as your boxes? so that it better matches your inspiration picture. And I went, oh my gosh, you're right. So I did. Thankfully, I matched the color as closely as I could, painted the wall, which made it absolutely feel fresh and clean. 
I did let it dry overnight, but the next day I brought in the file cabinets and I wanted to test everything to make sure it fit first. But here's the general idea of what I'm going to be doing. Now, sadly, my space is not as big as the inspiration picture, but I knew that going in. Again, this is a small section in my garage and I'm still using the other spaces behind. So once I knew everything fit, it was then time to go out and start sanding. I knew that front plank where I was actually going to be using as the front of my desk, I wanted to make sure that the edges were smooth on that. I was using the Minwax, and forgive the name, Jacobean, Jacobobean, however you say it, Jacobean. <laughs> That's the color I used on all of my wood. It is a little bit darker than the paper that I used on the back of my bookcases, but I really like that rustic look, especially against the white. Now, in a previous video, I had found this curbside treasure of this corner unit, and I love it. But the way it sits under the shelf for the storage area in my garage, there was an oddly shaped space behind it. I just took foam core, you know the dollar store foam core I love so much, and I just pieced some strips together to fill in this corner. This was a great solution because I didn't want to nail into that corner cabinet, and I didn't have any way of attaching it to the inside of the wall behind it. It was just too small of a space. By just wedging this little foam core piece in, it looks like a continuation of a wall and I feel safe and I don't have to worry about dust and I'm really happy with this silly solution. The first thing I did towards making this is hanging the brackets. I ordered these off of Amazon. I got a set of four for $17 and they look almost exactly like the picture. Here's a little Noreen tip. I will measure out kind of where I want the brackets spaced out on the wall, but once I have the markings done, I will take the bracket and put one screw in. And then I'll get out my level and adjust the bracket to make sure it's level before I put in the other screws. If you have a wonky bracket, then your shelf isn't going to be straight. Then I'll take a stick or a lightweight piece of wood and rest it on the bracket that's attached to the wall. And this will allow me to adjust the perfect placement of the unattached bracket and use a level so I know when that shelf is perfectly straight. Once all of my wood was stained, you see I have a big square in the middle. I'll show you what I do with that later, but it was time to start getting things up. Once the brackets were in, I chose to put the shelves up first so that I wouldn't have to lean over the desk. Then it was just as simple as attaching the eight inch planks to the tops of the file cabinets. The hardest part was actually reconnecting my computer, but then it was time for the fun part, which was decorating and finding the homes for all of the little things that I had pulled out and scattered everywhere. So here's a reminder of the chaos that was before. Here is a reminder of the inspiration, which, oh my gosh, every time I see this, I just love it. I think it's so pretty. And here is my finished project. Again, my space is not as large as that little sample office, but considering it's in the middle of my garage and here's my storage above it just to prove it really is in the middle of my garage, I think this space is finally super nailed down. So I have my Annie's crafting area and on those shelves are all the kits that I get to work on. I have my little corner where I keep all of my tools on my pegboard. The back area, as you know, is where I'm doing my filming and this holds all of my supplies in those boxes. Everything has a label so it's easy to find. As craft spaces go, I was really happy with this space up to this little corner cabinet. Now I can move past that area and enjoy my area completely. I think it's finally all cohesive and I'm really excited about some of the things I set up for my space so that it's more functional. I'm still playing with the placement of the visual items. I, I'm trying to balance that cluttered look. I like having a lot of things out, but with the placement of things I use most often being accessible. So let me show you specifically what I've done. I did create a small pegboard, but I painted it the same color so that it would kind of blend. This basically doubles as a drawer since I don't have a drawer in my little desk spot. This first shelf are the things I reach for most. These are my notebooks with all of my business, virtual organizing, and ideas. And then I have a little junk basket on that little shelf. 
Up above, I have my reams of paper in those white paper holders. And right now, this is just decorative, but I'll probably get other supplies put in there. Once again, these file cabinets were such a great find, and they were the perfect base for this desk idea. Now my CPU, my little computer, has been an issue in the past because it's such a pain to pull out. It's a heavy little unit, but I had this metal plant stand that's been laying around and I didn't have a large pot to put on it. I attached a piece of wood with some screws through the base of the plant stand and now I can pull out my computer, get access to it, and just slide it back in now. Why hadn't I thought of that before? I also attached some command strips and hung binder clips to manage my cables. I have a lot of cords that I'm using between my camera, my phone, and my video camera. This allows me to just pull them out and attach them as I need to, but I also took the time to label each one on both ends so that when I need my cable, I can just peek at which cable it is, attach the right one, and be done. I also have a little heart on each one so I know which direction to plug it in. It's just a small time saver. I also attached my calendar to the wall so it's not on my work surface. I know this seems like a silly thing to do, but it's so easy for me to just pull it down, make any changes, and then hang it right back up. I don't change my calendar too much. I usually pre-plan, so this allows me to just have it on the wall and see it. And if I do need to flip ahead, it's not that hard to take the binder clip off. I have my tickler file right here on my desk next to my calendar so that as I'm dropping things in, I can quickly peek at the date. Now, remember that collaboration I got to do with the Posh Paper Lady in making this rolling storage cart? I am finally finding a place to use it. I ended up sliding this in the corner. I designed the desk so that this would fit in the corner. It gave me a stand for my printer, but also a home for my Cricut. It's funny, I have not used my Cricut as often as I would like because I would actually have to pull it out and set it up. Now it's just there and when I'm done, I can just slide this right back in. Believe it or not, this is what I am the most excited about. Now, when I posted this idea on Patreon, you guys were so sweet. Everyone was really concerned about the safety of the desk because it was so far apart. And believe it or not, I had already thought about the fact that the wood was going to be bowing a little bit. So here's what I did to rectify that. I attached that large square piece that you saw earlier underneath. This also gave me a chance to put in several screws so that the top was completely level. This is also resting on that cleat, so this desk is super solid. I've already stood on the middle to make sure and it doesn't budge. The other thing I did is I put several screws through each plank on both sides of the file cabinet, so this is a very sturdy piece. My next project is going to be building a stand that matches my desk so that my monitor can stand on top of it and it can house my little speakers. This little office space has gone through a lot of revisions, but I am so stinking proud of the fact that almost everything in here was curbside finds, hand-me-downs, thrift store things, and one small piece at a time, I have updated it until I finally have this cohesive space that I love being in. And I realized the other day when I was editing a, when I was editing a video that I've been saying I'm in love with a lot. I guess that's my word of the month. <laughs> I'm going to try and say it less, but I really am in love with this space right now. I wish it wasn't in a garage, but the nice thing is is if and when I ever move and I get a different space, this all just comes off the wall and can be added into whatever room I occupy. So let's talk about the cost that this took. Once again, I was flabbergasted when I realized how expensive desks were these days. I wasn't looking for anything solid wood. Most of the pieces that I was finding were just particle board and you had to assemble it yourself and they were still three to four hundred dollars and they weren't even that big and didn't have any storage space. So I wanted to make sure that I had something that would fit my space, give me storage, 
and really look nice. So here's the breakdown. The two most expensive components were the file cabinets and the wood. Good gravy wood is expensive right now. So the file cabinets were 44, contact paper was 11, the paint was 11, I only got a quart. The wood was $43, but trust me, I used every stinking scrap of that and the little pieces that I haven't used in here, I'm going to make the printer stand. So I'm using every dime's worth of that wood. The brackets were 17, so the total came to $126 way less than any desk that I found, and it fits my space perfectly. Now about the paint, I used Valspar from Lowe's, and here's the color selections I chose. I went with Destiny because I took one of my lids from my boxes into the store, and it matched really well. Under this light, it's a little bit different, so I'll let you choose. So the three color names from left to right are Aquatic Edge, Destiny, and Lake Country. All three are beautiful colors, so if you're trying to match anything similar to mine, Valspar was the brand, and here's the colors and the numbers. Let me know what you guys think of my new space. I really am happy with it, and I hope it inspired you to tackle a project of your own. Every once in a while, I get a little overwhelmed or intimidated by a project, we live in a world of YouTube being right in our fingertips with a plethora of videos that will coach you and teach you how to do things. I really wanted to learn how to do a biscuit joining so that I could attach the wood together. Alas, I don't have a router, so I couldn't do that, but you better believe that as soon as I'm able to get a piece of machinery that will cut those joints so that I can attach the wood together, oh, your girl is going to start making some amazing things. <laughs> so. I hope this inspired you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons. They are unbelievably supportive, helpful, encouraging. I love going on to Patreon, asking them questions, showing them ideas, and getting their feedback. If you would like to be part of that community and help support this channel, that information is down in the description below. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for liking this video. And if you haven't hit that red button yet, please hit it. I'm working really hard and I keep getting inching closer to that 100,000. So if you could help me get to that goal, I'd be most appreciative. I'll see you guys in just a few days. Bye.